Hi, welcome. Um, so most of my work starts from a tweet, and this is <laughs> this is this is the tweet that that motivated what I'm going to tell you about. Um, some of you might remember this. In addition to winning the electoral college in a landslide, I won the popular vote. If you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally, maybe some of you retweeted this. I don't know. Um, so. This, was, this is a pretty common sentiment, and in here, Dick Morris, who's a political operator, he was, he was talking about the 2012 election, but basically exhibited the same sentiment. He said probably over a million people voted twice in this, the 2012 election. He said this on, on Fox News in 2014. And a lot of people, a lot of Americans believe this. About 25% of Americans believe that, that double voting, this very particular type of voter fraud, is, is widespread. And the problem is it's quite difficult to understand whether or not this is really happening. And I should preface this by saying we don't, we have very few documented instances of people double voting. Uh, but at the same time, that might just be, be because they're really good at it and we just can't catch them. And you know, this is always, it's always like tricky to figure out what's going on. And in the US, for better or for worse, we don't have a, a unique national identifier. So when you vote, you, you have a, uh, we have something like the name, your first name, your last name, your date of birth, but we don't have a good way to track votes across states. And so in theory, it's like right now I'm registered in New York, I'm also registered in California, I vote in California, but I could uh, request an absentee ballot, and in theory I could just mail that in, and then I would be double voting, don't do that, that's illegal, but I, I could do that, and so it's not actually that hard, and it would be pretty difficult to track that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a very simple strategy that we came up with to estimate the number of people that are really double voting. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first, we're gonna start with the complete national record of voting. Uh, and so this is about 100 million, about 130 million people uh, vote in a presidential election. So we're gonna start out with the complete national record of this. So we know their first name, their last name, their date of birth, and whether or not they voted. Not who they voted for, but whether or not they voted. And now we're just gonna count the records with the matching first name, last name, and date of birth. Great, so this is a big computation, we can do this. And when we do this, we actually get about 800,000 matches. So now Dick Morris is not looking so crazy. You know, this was like right around the same number, about a million people with the exact first name, last name, date of birth, including year. So what's going on here? Are about a million people double voting? What do you think is happening? What was that? Oh yeah, so this, so oh yeah, so this is a really good point. I'm going to get back to this in a minute, but this is these are actual actual votes, not just registration. So a lot of people are double registered, and this adds a lot of confusion in the public dialogue. But here I'm really talking about voting. So if you look at whether or not they voted, there are about a million people with the exact same uh, first name, last name, and date of birth, including year, that have double voted, or that, that, that where it looks like they've double voted. Now, the issue is, and I think I heard this from, from the crowd, is that there are, it's possible that, peop, that there are just two people out there, they're different people, and it's hard to conceive of this, but when you're talking about 120 million people, 130 million people, it's possible that someone has exactly the same first name, last name, and date of birth, including the year. It's hard to conceive of it, but it is possible, and so this is what we, um, uh, we wanted to investigate. So you probably have heard of this, this uh, classic birthday problem. It's this famous problem in, in math. Probably many of you like, saw it in high school or in college. So in a room full of about 150 people, this is about a million people we have here, how many have the same uh, birth date, just month and day, not including year, not using first name, last name, just month and day? How many people do you think in this room right now? Six. You know, that's, that's one. So let's find out. Okay, we're gonna do this. I only have three minutes, I'm on the clock, but I think we have some signs. So we're gonna line up by birthday, and we're gonna, we're gonna do this by month. And so if the, the January through June people can go on, on this side, if you're able, if you're gonna walk, and we have some people with signs holding up the months. And then on this side, the July through December over here, and just line up by your sign and find your birthday matches. Okay, is everyone sorted? Have you found your, is, has everyone found their matches? Okay, raise your hand, one person in a pair with a match, raise your hand once you've found your matches. And if, there, and if you have a triple, two people raise their hand. Okay, so ra raise your hand high so we can count how many, how many matches there are. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, great. 
17, 18. 18. Okay, good. So we, we have about 20 matches here. So it's, it's quite a lot. Any triples? Any triples? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have a good triples. Okay, any quadruples? Any fours? Oh, really? Four? Wow, okay. Okay. Uh, fives? That's unlikely. But any, 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 oh, you have a five? No, no, four, four. Okay, okay, good, you can sit down now. <laughs> okay, so as you, as you saw, this was a surprising number. There is a lot of just coincidental matches. And now this is real, so in, in looking at the 2012 election, there were 141 ballots cast by someone named John Smith, exact same first name, last name, who were born in 1970. So all of these John Smiths born in 1970, naively we would think of them as double matches. There are 27, or sorry, 27 pairs of those people had the exact same first name, last name, and date of birth, including year. So these 27 people, we would expect to have, the, or we would naively call them 54? 27. 27 pairs. These 27 pairs, so one of them, um, we would think these 27, well, we would naively say those 27 people were uh, double match, were double voters. But exactly, this is what we'd expect by chance alone. And so there's 141, that's roughly what we have in the room right now, and we already saw that roughly about 20, this is gonna vary depending on exactly what the composition of the room is. But here we, we see that this is what we'd expect by chance alone. So now, this is a real, phenomenon that we have to deal with. And when we adjust for this, we're just gonna adjust all those 800,000 matches that we saw, and we, we adjust by this very simple birthday, um, uh, birthday paradox, and we get all of a sudden down to 29,000. So a lot, the vast majority of these individuals that we naively call double voters, in fact, it goes down to 29,000 once we do this simple birthday adjustment. Okay, so now, is this the real number of double voters? Yeah, so here, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, here, so in, the, in this, in this you're, you're right, in this example, I restricted the people who are born in the same year, and then you're just doing the, the day and the month. And now in this room, we were ignoring year, but we're also doing day and month. So it's, and also we're not talking about first name, last name, but now you have to scale this up all the way to 120 million people. So when we do this type of adjustment, we get down to 29,000, but now there's all sorts of other funniness that happens. It turns out, so this is a distribution of, of when people are born in one particular year, and we can see that the, the solid points here are weekdays, the, the empty points are weekends, and so more people are being born on weekdays than on weekends. That seems odd. What's going on? So, so we now can move things a few days and so we can, we can induce labor, or we can have, we have C-sections, all sorts of things. So we can, we can schedule pregnancies just a little bit, at least. And so we have these funny patterns. But now this means that we're going to have more coincidental matches than you might naively expect. Why is that? Because now we effectively say, well, if I have to guess what day of the, the year you're born on, I might as well just, if I, if I know that year, I might as well just not guess a weekend. It's gonna increase my chance of guessing your birthday, and so this means that I'm gonna have some more coincidental matches. And if we adjust for this, we're down to 26,000. Okay, so now there's still some more funniness. If I really have to guess when someone is born and I know their first name, what am I gonna do? Well, if I tell you someone's first name is June, when are you gonna guess that they're born? So sometime in June. <laughs> Right, so this is this is a good one. If I if I tell you that someone, so this is what happens. All the Junes tend to be born in June. They there there are some Junes born in February, but that's that's how it goes. Um, uh, if your name is Autumn, there's a good chance you're born in the autumn. And if your name is Josephina, what why there's one particular day that you're you're likely to be born on. So Josephina, so that's extra credit. Anyone know this day? What's the, what day is that? March, I think I heard it. March and IT. Yeah, so this, so this is um, uh, Saints Day, and so if you meet someone, you, just, you can play this like magic trick. If you meet someone named Josephina, you can almost certainly guess what day of the year she was born on. Um, uh, it might be a little bit creepy, but it's still, it's, it'll still be impressive. Okay, so what's the most common? So this turns out, this, these are very common patterns. Uh, if if uh, someone's name is George, what's the day they're most likely to be born on? February 22nd, right? George Washington's birthday. If your name is Carol, what day are you likely to be born on? Hmm? 
Christmas, right. So uh, Christmas Day, December 25. So all of these types of coincidental matches, so anytime I, I have these types of cl this clumping, all of a sudden it makes it more likely to find coincidental matches. And when we account for this, we're down to 21,000. So 800,000 to 29,000 to 26,000 once we deal with the weekdays, weekends, and then 21,000 once we deal with these funniness with this first day, uh, first name. So now we really thought we were done at this point, and we realized there's one more thing that was creating this estimate that we had to account for. And this is where the humans come in. So when you go in, so we were, so a lot of my work starts with a digital record. And at some point we realized, well, that's, the digital record could have errors. And how could it have errors? Well, we, when you go to a, a polling place and you sign in, so in many, this differs by location, but in many places you sign in. And then after the fact, someone goes through, this is a real poll book, someone goes through and scans where you signed to transfer that paper record to a digital record, which is what we were analyzing. It turns out it's really hard for humans to do this. And so there's about a 1% error rate. So we sent people out to uh, polling places and tried to and compared the poll book with the digital record. And we found that there was about a 1% error rate in when people were, were marking these things and, and how people were marking these. And when you account for that, all the 21,000 disappears. And so, so why is this? Because like I said, I'm registered in two states right now, in New York and in California. And so if someone accidentally, if I vote in California, if someone accidentally scans my record in New York, that's going to make it look like I double voted when in fact I hadn't double voted. And so just 1% error rates when you're talking about these you know, 100 million plus records can have these pretty dramatic effects on, on the estimation. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll just say if you're interested in this style of work that is at the intersection of technology and policy, please check out what we're doing at the Stanford Computational Policy Lab. Thank you.